Hi, Art and Stationery friends. My name is Becca Hilbert, and I have been asked by Parku to review their erasable gel pens. So I'm going to test it on five different papers, maybe throw a bunch of different things at it, and see how they hold up both as a stationery supply and as an art supply. So keep watching. Parku erasable pens are thermostatic erasable pens, which means that when you apply heat or friction, the ink begins to disappear. For today's review, I have the seven color Parku erasable gel pen set. I have a Lectotherm journal, which works well with fountain pens. I have fluid watercolor paper. I have a knock knock jotter. This is a today's plan of attack. I have coated cardstock paper. I use this at conventions for commissions. And then I have my Blick Studio Sketchbook. So I have a pretty wide range of papers. And I'm going to definitively test for at least three things. Erasability. I want to see if I can ink over these uh, these erasable inks using like a Fudigo Kochi or even a Copic proof ink. I want to test with Copic slash other alcohol markers and I want to test with watercolors. So there are a lot of products I want to test with these erasable gel pens. And Parku erasable gel pens aren't the only erasable gel pens on the market but they're very affordable. Um, I have a collection of the Friction slash Frixon uh, erasable pens which I picked up while I was in Japan and I'm going to be excited to compare these these pins, pit them against each other so that we can get a good idea of what, what's worth it for the price point and how they all perform. So we're going to flip this over, take a look at the back, and they are, they are the Parku erasable gel pins in 0.7 millimeter, which is actually my favorite size since I'm kind of heavy handed. Erasable gel pin, write, remove, rewrite without damaging documents. Apply to students writing. New thermosensitive gel ink that disappears with friction using the rubber tail tip on the pen with no residue and no tearing of paper. Smooth writing gel ink, tip 7... 0.7 millimeters. If pen is exposed to high temperatures, um, less than 10 degrees Celsius or over 10 degrees Celsius, the ink will disappear. To restore color, coal, I think it says cool to at least uh, negative 10 in the freezer and the ink will reappear. So it will be really fun to do some heat sensitivity tests as well, but I don't own a hair dryer, so we're going to maybe leave it in the car. Use hair dryer can also make color disappear if writing on fabric products or on wallpaper, etc. Not recommended for signatures, examination papers, or official documents. Water-based, so this will probably not work with watercolors, but we're going to test it anyway. Water-based, non-toxic, ink, acid-free, non-bleeding. The ink has been passed the test of EN719 ASTM D4236 reach pre-registration. Colors, black, blue, red, turquoise, purple, green, and pink colors available. So I should mention these were sent to me free of charge for the purposes of review. I was contacted by Parku, and since I had recently purchased the friction slash friction pins, I was eager to see how they would hold up, how they would compare, and I've been wanting to play with these pins anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and get started and we're going to get started sort of or we're going to go kind of in terms of like how likely would you be to use these on this. So we're going to start with the Lectotherm diary and this is my actual diary. And I like that the pins come in a reusable case and they are like side knock advance so not top knock because they have the eraser at the top and they also have a bit of a grip on the side and they have a bit of protective um like wax just to keep them from drying out in transit so we're going to try an immediate erase and then I'm going to let it dry. So it doesn't erase, uh, um, I'll zoom in so you guys can see. It doesn't erase too cleanly with immediate application. I've found that in keeping with other pins of this type. So I am going to go ahead and get cracking with the other ones and then we will erase all at the same time. Thank you. 
as you guys can see, a fresh application leads to smearing. So if you were to make a mistake in your writing or sketching, I would wait until a little bit later, until it had a chance to dry, to make your corrections. And the side advancement mechanism is very handy. It makes for quick pick up and put down. to give this a nice fairly lengthy amount of time to dry in fact I'll close it we'll see if we get any transferring so far no transferring I'm gonna switch over here to my knock knock pads this is just kind of like plain cartridge paper plain notebook paper I'll try to dig up some loose leaf for you guys as well I'm gonna do the exact same test so I'll go ahead and I'll do that in time-lapse
So on slightly more absorbent papers, we don't have the smearing problems that we had in the coated lectotherm notebook. And that coating is what makes that lectotherm notebook so good for fountain pens, but maybe not so great for these sort of pads. So what works for gel pens or ballpoint pens often doesn't work for fountain pens anyway. It's just fun to be able to test a bunch of different things. I found that on the slightly more absorbent non-coated paper, you could erase almost immediately. I have, however, set up these longer dry time tests that we're going to go back to and check in a bit. Next, I have a sheet of smooth finish, lightly coated cardstock. This is what I use at conventions for my commissions because the ink um, from my Fuda Gokochi doesn't feather or bleed. And I thought these thermostatic pins would be really neat to do commissions with. So I'm um, excited to get to test them out. Now, since this paper had slightly more coating, it wasn't so easy to cleanly erase while the inks are still a little bit wet. I'm hoping though that once the inks have a couple of minutes to dry and soak into the paper, they'll be easier to erase. Next up, we have the Blick Studio Sketchbook. This is my sketchbook of choice. And if I'm gonna doodle, I'm probably going to doodle in one of these. I'm gonna do the same preliminary testing
On this paper, I found that although it's a very absorbent paper, I did have some difficulty fully erasing certain colors while wet. And I wonder if that isn't due to sort of the fibrous nature of the paper. The ink doesn't sit on top, it soaks in, so it may be harder, it may take more pressure or more heat to get it to fully erase from the paper. Finally, for this portion of testing, I am going to test on watercolor paper. This is fluid cold pressed cellulose base, so that's a wood pulp base watercolor paper. And I use this paper pretty frequently. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up a nice, fresh, clean sheet and continue on with my testing. While doing all these erasing tests, I noticed a few things. One, most of the colors go down very juicy. There's no ink flow problems. The only um, exception to that would be red. Red is a little bit dry, but everything else goes down really juicy. Um, the second is that papers with textures can be hit or miss with these pins. Some of them you can erase really cleanly, some of them you can't, and I have a feeling that's due to the fibers. Thirdly, there seems to be a direction to erase in. Rather than sort of like that, like you would with a regular eraser, they seem to work best if you're trying to erase horizontally. Of course, I still have all of the wait and let it dry test to do, so these results aren't completely conclusive. Would you guys believe that after I had already completed all these tests, I realized that I'd missed testing the black on like five of the papers? So I'm gonna go ahead and privately redo all of that and check in with you guys. The black handled very similarly to the blue, good ink flow, um, erased, moderately cleanly on most papers with the exception being like coated papers. So um, there isn't really anything different to report there. I'm going to allow these inks to sort of dry for an hour and come back and do a second erasing test. All right, so we've had a little more than an hour for these to dry. I'm going to go ahead and do the second part of my erasing test. And since the erasers for all of these are pretty much the same, it's like a nub of hard, clear rubber, I'm just gonna use the same eraser for each one. So I'm gonna try, ooh. Yes, it erases much cleaner. Zoom and zoom in so you guys can see. Then the initial erasing test on this paper, and this is the Lectotherm bullet journal. I use it as a diary. I don't bullet journal. It 
Now this could be really helpful if you keep like a calendar and as things change, you might need to erase. Or if you schedule, say, YouTube content, as things change, you can erase. So after about an hour's dry time, every color erased cleanly from the Lectotherm bullet journal. Next, we have the Knock Knock pad. Seems to be erasing quite cleanly. With a little bit of ghosting, but not too much. I'm sure if I took a hair dryer to it, it would be a much cleaner eraser. So these are heat sensitive inks. What we're basically doing is creating friction using this piece of rubber on the back. And that friction creates heat and the heat makes the ink disappear. If you were to put it in the freezer, it would reappear. All right, so here is cardstock. This is a little more smeary. Not too bad though. And there's a little more ghosting, especially with like turquoise. Than there was on some of the other papers. This could be because this is a paper with a coating on it. Next up, the Blick Studio sketchbook. seems to have similar ghosting issues. I wonder if it's the type of paper making a difference or the texture on the paper. And then finally, our fluid cellulose based watercolor paper. That's actually a bit of real eraser smudge on there, so I'll move that. Because these are friction erasing inks, you're going to need to apply some pressure. That can be uncomfortable if you're doing a lot of erasing like we're doing right now. And I noticed on the watercolor paper there is some ghosting there as well. So next we are going to do alcohol marker ink and watercolor or water testing. We're gonna begin with the alcohol ink and um, I'm gonna be fair and give this a fair bit of dry time and I'm also going to test it with every color. So for me, I like to use colored leads when I do some of my alcohol marker pieces and it would be neat to be able to take a hair dryer and erase the line arts So I want to see how much smudging I get using inks, these thermostatic inks with alcohol inks. Now I've got a squiggle of each color. I am going to go ahead. I was going to let them dry for an hour, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do an immediate test and then an hour test.
and I am using a Copic E30. Something light enough where if it starts smearing, we would see it, but dark enough that you guys can actually see me apply it. So it seems like there is no smearing or color migration in the immediate test. I'm gonna add a little more ink to the page. Let it dry for an hour and then come back to it. Okay guys, so it's been a full hour. They worked well with immediate application. So I am fairly certain they will be alcohol marker proof after our hour dry time. Yep, looks like no smudging or smearing. Now let's see. Oh, it's like magic! They can be erased from underneath the inks. Then that's due to the heat. Um, I think Sakuems did a video where she showed how you could use um, a hair dryer to erase your inks. It might have been uh, Lemia Crescent. It was one of the two. Did a video showing how you can erase the inks from under your markers using a hair dryer for like other types of friction erasable pens. And I wasn't sure if the eraser would generate enough heat or if it would cause problems with the marker. I wonder how many layers you can get away with. But that's super cool. I am super excited about that. That's a lot of possibility there. So our next test is going to be a water application along the same lines. So I'm gonna go get a cup of water and I'll be right back. So for this next portion, I am going to use clear water, but if this works, I may do a watercolor demo with this. I certainly wanna do a marker demo with this later. So I've got clean water and just a random brush. We're gonna do it the same way we did the other test where we have two sections. We have an immediate application and then we have an application where we've waited an hour. Kind of like fully dry. These are water-based things. What's interesting is it didn't make a huge mess with the black. Um, it lifted up a little bit, but it's kind of like a negligible amount. lifts up a lot more. I also wonder if you can erase these inks out from under the watercolor. You'll probably damage the watercolor though. It's a little bit different than alcohol markers in terms of how it uh, So alcohol markers tend to... Gosh, I hope you could hear me. I had my mic down on the floor. Alcohol markers tend to sink into the paper whereas watercolor does tend to sit on top. So it would probably, all that friction would probably actually damage the watercolor itself. But these do seem to be water reactive. And that's fine because they did, I think, mention that they were water soluble on the back of the packaging. So that was, oh, that's neat. That was something I kind of knew about going into this review. And it's always fun to test out all the properties because you might discover a new use that you would have never thought to have tried. So it looks like all of the colors are water reactive. Let's give it an hour to dry and then check back in. All right, Padnas, it's been about an hour. We're gonna go ahead, add some water. Actually, it's a little less reactive. And if you scrub at it, it does start to pick up. But initial application, it's less reactive probably as 
the water sits on top of the water-based gel ink and is reabsorbed, it'll probably become more prone to reactivation. There are some artists who use water reactive inks to great effect, like using Stabilo fine liners for watercolors. That is not a technique I myself have mastered yet, unfortunately. Otherwise, I would be happy to show you guys. So, I'm going to take the initial swatch tests that we swatched about an hour ago. Whoa, look at that. It'll pick up. I figured it would, but I'm excited to see it. It'll pick up even sort of the blended out. Let's zoom in so you can see. Even sort of the blended out areas. We'll do this on blue. Look at that. It's like magic. I almost wish they were more water reactive because then it'd be like erasable watercolors. How crazy would that be? Still, it's really cool that even though things have been blended out a bit, they haven't lost their thermostatic properties. So that is ridiculously cool. We have one more test left to do in this video. We're going to try inking over these pens. So give me just one second, I'll be right back. We're gonna try inking over these Parku erasable pens with two different types of ink. We're going to use water-based ink. This is Kuratake Fudigo Kochi. It's one of my go-to inking pens. We're also going to use waterproof pigment-based ink. We're using a Pigma MB for the purposes of this demonstration. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start with the turquoise. And I'm not going to really give it any sort of lengthy drawing time. I'm just gonna move quick and act like I'm sketching. Next we're gonna do blue. Red. black and this will sort of give me an idea of what I'm working with because I plan on doing a field test a few field tests with these actually pink and then green so what we're gonna test for is I'm just going to kind of ink all over it and then I'm going to try to erase the ink out from underneath the second layer of ink. Do that now with the MB. Now with the M, with both of these, they kind of benefit from you letting them dry for a while. With um, when I use colored leads with the Fudigo Kochi, I don't normally bother erasing. Oh, we should do this with gra oh no, this will work. Okay, so this is what I got. I'm gonna let this dry for a while, come back to it, and use the friction-based eraser on the back of these pins to try to uh, erase the line art from underneath the inks. Okay, so these have had a little bit of time to dry. I'm gonna go ahead and, oh, it smears the ink when it comes to the Fudego Kochi. Let me try to zoom in for you guys. Let's see, little bit of smearing, not too bad with the pigment-based Pigma. Little bit of smearing on the Fudego Kochi, not so bad with the Pigma. And it could be because I only waited 20, uh, 15 minutes, whereas when I ink things, I usually wait a full 24 hours, especially for things like alcohol markers. It just tends to have the best result. And this isn't really the intended use case anyway for these pens. I just 
I'm sort of throwing things at the wall and seeing if it'll stick. Actually, the pink one doesn't smear as much. And I think part of the smearing is we're having to use pressure and friction to erase the ink underneath. And that will cause a little bit of smearing with ink on top that may not have fully dried. So that has been our initial look at the Parku erasable pens. These are click gel based ink pens with thermostatic ink. They have a hard rubber eraser on the back and a grip on the front. They're fairly comfortable in the hand. They also have a clip so that you can put it in your pocket and bring it with you. These seem like they would be really great for people who work in say an office setting or do a lot of scheduling, teachers, that sort of thing. People who need to make corrections over the things they've written. These would be really good. Um, they're also a little less expensive than the friction pins. Frix I've always said frixon because there's an X in there and there's an I-O-N in there and a friend pointed out that it's pronounced friction and that still just doesn't seem right to me. So I'm going to go grab some prices. I'll be right back. Parku pins are available on Amazon for $7.99. You guys can find a link in the description below. The Pilot Frixon, Frixon, uh, retractable pins, same form factor, even the same colors, are available for $12.98 on Amazon. Again, you can check the description down below. I own a lot of the Pilot Frixon pins, friction pins, so you guys are going to be seeing those in upcoming videos as well as more of these. I found these a lot of fun and I'm going to be using them a lot for my scheduling, journaling kind of stuff to help me keep organized. So I like them enough that I would keep using them. They're definitely not going to go in the trash. Big thanks to Parku for sending me these pins to review. And um, if you guys enjoyed this video, check out some of my other stationary videos here on the channel. So have a great day, guys. I'll see you again really soon. 